I think there's two things that we think about before we burn. One, the land really needs and can utilize um, some fire, and two, we have the ability to efficiently work in that area. Different ecological communities developed around fires and so became dependent on fire to be able to function and to be able to maintain the level of species richness and diversity that were here like say when some of the first early European explorers saw this place and saw how diverse it and rich it was. Those communities would have experienced fire on an almost annual basis. The Native Americans that lived here both historically and the prehistoric people that lived here would have had fire and used fire um, to their benefit and they did that to attract grazers as well as to maybe help with some of their agriculture and things like that. We identify an area that we want to burn, then we identify the most efficient and effective um, fire break locations. We get that mapped and then we do what's called building our fire break. We go in and use chainsaws, hand tools, maybe a tractor with a mower and we're trying to get um, things to look essentially like our hiking trails here at Fontenelle Forest. In other words, kind of a leveled out area free of tree stumps, sticks, excessive vegetation, so that when November comes, we can come back with leaf blowers and blow it down to just maybe some mowed short grass. That way, uh, if fire does come, or when we do light along that line, we can easily maintain it because that, that fire line, or fire break, if you will, is free of fuel. We try to build our fire breaks as good as possible um, and pay particular attention to this, what we call urban interface, where the homes and businesses approach the forest boundary. Public safety is um, number one to us, so we want to keep residents safe that live near our woods. We want to keep hikers that come and visit us safe, and we want to keep our crew safe. We utilize tools that are used by wildland firefighters uh, that are also doing suppression. So we use what's, what the suppression people call backfire torch. It's also called a drip torch. It's an aluminum cylinder with a tube and a wick at the end of that tube. And that tube drops fuel onto the wick, which is lit, which then drops a little bit of flaming fuel down onto the areas that we're trying to light. We have what's called a bladder bag. Essentially, it's a backpack with a plastic liner with water and then a brass hand pump. They work really effectively. And the beauty with a bladder bag is it's soft-sided, so it conforms to your body. So we're able to maneuver up and down the hills even though we might be carrying 30 or 40 pounds of water on our back. I think the thing to remember with fire is it's a natural process that's been on this landscape. So really the reason we burn um, is not to accomplish any particular goal or list of goals, but what we do is just provide the landscape what it's adapted with um, so that it can function the way it was designed to. 